All right, uh, let's talk about frequency response and filters. Uh, so frequency response is basically we are going to be looking at circuits and the input circuit, uh, the input to the circuit is going to have more than one frequency or a frequency sweep. So instead of just a single 60 hertz signal, the input voltage might contain multiple 60 hertz, 50 hertz, 120 hertz, 121 hertz, and so forth. And we want to find out how the circuit output will respond to a input with such varying frequency. Okay, so that's called frequency response. And today the goal is to talk about filters. So what are filters? So consider this. Uh, consider this noisy ECG signal. So here's a signal, ECG signal. You can see uh, the peaks and the, and the valleys, but you do see a lot of noise in that signal. If we put this through a RLC circuit of some a particular configuration, and we'll talk about those configurations later on, uh, what we can get is a much cleaner looking signal from which we can decipher a lot more important information. So we put in a noisy signal into an RLC circuit. What came out? was a clean looking signal. So essentially what a filter is, and exactly as the English word means, it filters out certain unwanted components. And in this case, the unwanted components might have been high frequency noise. So a filter is essentially an electronic circuit which performs some kind of signal processing function. And specifically, it's intended to remove unwanted signal components, or it's, it's intended to enhance the components of the signal that we want to keep. Now, there are a number of types of filters. Uh, there are basically four types. A uh, low pass filter, uh, which is shown on the top left right here, allows lower signal frequencies. So frequencies starting at DC all the way to some lower value to pass, and anything else beyond that does not pass. So what this is showing is the magnitude so imagine a signal coming through and it's being multiplied by this particular thing, okay? So this is a gain of one, let's say, right at this point. So we'll call this a gain of one. We'll call this a gain of one. So any signal that comes in, let's say that here's my signal that's coming in, I multiply that. What I essentially have is the frequencies that are beyond, below this point. And by the way, this was the frequency of the input signal. Any frequency that's beyond this passes, anything that, uh, at this point does not pass. Anything around this point right here does not pass. This right here does not pass. So we have only the lower frequencies passing, so it's called a low pass filter. The opposite side of this is called a high pass filter. So the lower frequencies do not go through, meaning the output is equal to zero whenever the frequency of the input is low, and all the higher frequencies pass through. So that's called a high pass filter. A bandpass filter is a filter that allows signals within a band of frequencies, somewhere in the middle. Not the lower frequencies, not the higher frequencies to pass through, but a small band in the middle to pass through. For example, FM station 91.1. 91.1 is a particular frequency that is right in between the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies. So when I tune my car radio to 91.1, I should listen, I should be getting only MPR. Right, so the lower side does not pass, the higher side does not pass, only 91.1 passes. So that's called bandpass filter. The opposite of bandpass filter is called a band stop filter. We want to allow the lower frequencies to pass, higher frequencies to pass, but a smaller band not to pass. Now when we connect uh, AC equipment, okay, because our AC signals are 60 hertz, what we see is on top of whatever it is that we're measuring, we might see what is known as a 60 hertz hum, meaning a noise or a 60 hertz component that is not really a part of the signal. It comes in because it's connected to an AC outlet. Now we want to be able to get rid of that 60 hertz. In that case, we would use this band stop filter where we would allow every frequency that's not 60 hertz to pass on the lower side, any frequency above 60 hertz to pass, but we want to prevent the 60 hertz from passing. So that's called a band stop filter. Now these are all ideal looking filters. No real realistic circuit can produce such sharp response between uh, what is allowed and what is not allowed. So you can't really get directly jump like these. So what ends up happening is more 
the black uh, lines that you see right here, those are more realistic filters. So the chains or allowing of the high frequencies or the low frequencies is not as abrupt as I indicated in uh, in uh, here earlier. It's more subtle than that. So more realistic filters look like these. Now what do these things uh, really mean? So let's take a quick look at low pass filter. What that, those were was a plot of magnitude response of the filter meaning it's a plot of magnitude against frequency on the x-axis. So the x-axis is the frequency, y-axis is the magnitude. When we're dealing with filters, there's one more plot we're interested in, which is the phase angle of, the, of how the phase angle of the output changes with respect to the phase angle of the input. So phase angle versus frequency plot is also interesting whenever we're do, dealing with frequency response, but we'll look at that later on when we discuss specific type of filters. So here is a generic low pass filter. Okay, so a couple of points I want to highlight. So this is a plot of the linear magnitude versus linear frequency. Later on we'll see how we can represent uh, a lot longer list of frequencies using something called Bode plots. Uh, but for now, linear frequency in the x-axis, linear magnitude on the y-axis, one basically means the ratio of the output to the input. V out over V in is equal to one. That means whatever is at the input is being passed towards the output. Okay? This special point right here, one over square root two in terms of the magnitude has a special function. That is equal to 0 0.707. So that's 0 0.707. Whatever the magnitude of 0 0.707 of the maximum magnitude. So in this case, the maximum magnitude is one. That particular thing has a special name that's called the cutoff frequency. So cutoff frequency is basically the term understood as frequencies after which the filter uh, does not pass. Or uh, So that's where the filter cutoff between what passes and what does not pass uh, basically uh, lies. Okay, so in, in this example right here, this abrupt line right here, that was the cutoff frequency. Okay, whereas in a more realistic filter, that would be at one square root of two of the maximum value. Now in the case of a high pass filter, this is the cutoff frequency. That's a cutoff frequency. But in a realistic filter, that is a cutoff frequency, 0 0.707. In the case of bandpass filter, we have two cutoff frequencies because we have the lower cutoff and the higher cutoff. Same thing in the band, pass, band stop filter, lower cutoff and higher cutoff. So cutoff frequency basically decide what falls in the what for falls in this region. In the case of the low pass filter, these are the frequencies that pass, and these are the frequencies that do not pass. So that's called a pass band. That's called a stop band. So that is a general idea behind filters. Now most RLC circuit we're going to look at RLC circuit most of them. In fact, all of the circuit that have only R, L, and C components are called passive filters, meaning the output can only be as high as the input. V out equals V in is maximum we're going to be able to get. So the ratio of V out over V in in these RLC circuits are going to be maximum of one. Later on, we might also, we'll also look at active filters. Active filters employ op amps in them. When we were dealing with op amps, we saw that we could convert, we could use the op amp and the negative feedback to control the gain of the output. Meaning, in an op amp, the output could be higher than the input value, right? So, uh, active filters can have a gain that is greater than one, which is dictated by again certain configurations of resistors placed in the feedback path. Well, we'll talk about those later, but for now, we'll basically say that. Uh, uh, RLC circuits are uh, just RLC based filters are called passive filters because the maximum gain they have is one, whereas op amp based filters are called active filters because the gain can be more than one. In the next video, we'll take a look at some simple RC configuration and look at uh, an RLC configuration and look at low pass, high pass, and band pass filters.